function right. You can't even think right. You are with your wife, you are imagining some hookah from two years ago. Listen, it is, it, this is true. I've had people, I've counseled people that even sex with their wives, they, they have to imagine former sexual partners. Covenants. We talked about this last week. God wants to partner with through, through intimacy. So this week I was praying and the Lord gave me a verse. I started under, uh, trying to understand intimacy through defiling myself. Um, Daniel. Daniel 1, verse 8, talking about intimacy. Why do I need to keep myself pure? So that I don't defile this body. I don't defile this body. But Daniel purpose, I need a mic so that uh, Pastor Bill can read for me. Go ahead, Pastor Bill. Purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. Stop. He purposed in his heart. He decided that I'm not going to defile this body. I'm not going to touch a woman. I'm not going to touch a guy. I'm not going to eat something that will defile me. I purpose in my heart, I decide in my heart that I'm not going to watch some porn. I'm not going to watch some movie that will defile me. I'm not going to compromise myself. I'm not going to do it. He purposed in his heart. Now, so I read this, and uh, Daniel was thrown in um, a lion's den. Daniel was not because he never defiled himself, even lions could not eat him. Listen, because the body is not defiled, the lions could not eat. You know why you are eaten by lions? You defile yourself. The lions could not eat him, could not eat Daniel, because his body was not appetizing to lions. I was, now in, I was in Africa, and um, uh, elephants eat vegetation. They eat leaves. They eat, they will, they will eat tree trunks. They will, there are animals that are called impalas. They eat grass. So the animals that eat grass do not eat meat. A lion will not eat grass because that is not appetizing to the lion. All right? So there, there, there is food for a lion. A lion will go and hunt. A lion eats blood, not grass. Now, intimacy with God is one way of causing your body to be pure with the Holy Spirit. Such that the devil comes to eat you. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. This is not appetizing to me. Now, so here, the importance of partnering with God through intimacy with God. So you make up your, your mind that I'm not going to click 
on something that I know I should not click on. You know not to click on that thing, but you do it anyway. You see it on your laptop, on your, on your phone, and you know, I should not click on this. But there's something in you that wants to click. Why? You are defiling your body. Now let me, uh, verse 9 of Daniel 1. Now God had brought Daniel into, the, uh, into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Intimacy with God. It brings favor. Favor. So the same lions, the same lions that could not eat Daniel, it's not that they didn't like meat. I love meat. I don't care so much for chicken. I love meat. I love beef. Daniel 6. I know oh, red meat. I know you're going to say all that. I know you are saying it, Kennedy, so don't, don't say it now. Daniel 6, verse 24. Daniel 6, verse 24. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast him into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all of their bones in pieces. Oh, hold on. These, the same lions that could not eat Daniel, now they ate these men. Before they even came on the ground, they were eaten. It's like Daniel was just an appetizer that caused them to, be, to have an appetite, but they could not touch him. Lions. There are lions around. There are lions in the form of men that want to destroy your life. The way out of these lions is your life. How you live your life. Do not defile yourself with things. Do not defile yourself with gossips. Do not defile yourself with backbiting. Do not defile yourself with talking about people that you have no business talking about. Do not defile yourself. The lions could not eat a man because when they smelled him, he did not smell like something they could eat. The defilement. I mean, look, like you give cabbage, a, a cabbage to a lion, like smell it, mm, no. But you give cabbage to a, an elephant, that is food. So you want to become food for the lion? Defile yourself. That's the only way. You want to become food to the devil? Continue watching whatever you watch. That's the way. So intimacy. Daniel had a relationship with God. So today I want to deal with the, the other part to this. So intimacy, the next thing that we need to capture is now knowledge of the mystery of the kingdom. Understanding the knowledge. Now, there is a way that people, even for me as a pastor, oh, pastor, you are wrong about this. I could be wrong uh, because of this verse. Oh, okay. So some people, Pastor Bill, They've mastered God, and they know how God works such that they qualify to come and tell anybody because of what they believe. Okay, now, let me, let me, let me show you something here. Um, in Genesis 19, verse 11, for God, the way God protected his people or his man, look at what he did. In verse 11, go ahead. 
and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So, for, okay, so now, are you saying if you are under attack, the only way God will protect you is to cause the people that are attacking you blindness? I love it. I love that. Lord, anyone that is trying to harm me, blind them. So here, God protected people through blindness. Let's go to 2 Kings 6, verse 17. I, I, I promise you, I'll start preaching. 2 Kings 6, verse 17. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Okay. So this guy was scared because he did not know the protection. So many times you are fearful simply because we don't know how God is protecting us. So he had to open his eyes to see. He opened his eyes and he saw. Now look at the next verse, verse 18. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. blindness. Go ahead. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. He is a man telling God what to do. <laughs> you know, he is a man telling God what to do. Why? Intimacy. Relationship. You become so close to God that you say, hey, smite them with blindness. <laughs> it, look, how close are you to tell God what to do? I'd look at me. They're outside there and they're trying to get me so blind them. And you know what else they did? He led them. And then later on he said, open their eyes. He led them to a place and then the man is in a driving seat. And the man is saying, hey God, blind them. For a little bit. Let's play this around. Oh, yeah, okay, now you can open your eyes. Oh, hey, hey, Lord, shut the heavens. So it doesn't rain. Shut the heavens. And, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, now you can let it rain. Like, how am I, how can you be so much in control of the kingdom? You, Leslie, think about it. What about the neighbors? Oh, yeah, shut the rains. I didn't, I didn't prepare my garden this time, so I don't need the rains, so shut it down. What about the guy in the next door? Imagine the power we have to rule over even government officials, to walk in the governor's office and say, hey, there are change or else to no rain. Instead of whatever stuff we say, but you walk in such a power. Why is a man... Why is a man saying these things like, open their eyes, uh, smite them with blindness? Now, I'm talking about intimacy. Now, I'm talking about the understanding the way things work. So, last night, the Lord took me to Matthew 2, verse 13. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod, For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And verse 14, when he arose, verse 14, go ahead. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night 
and departed into Egypt. So as soon as he has started thinking, okay, Lord, what's going on here? Elisha, Lord, is, him, is by himself in the house. People are surrounded his house. You blinded them. Elisha, you blinded them. Pregnant woman involved? Take off to Egypt? Well, well, why can't you just blind the people that are coming to attack? Like, why? I mean, think about it. This woman is pregnant. They had to flee to get on a camel and go to Egypt. Now, the other part in, in uh, Genesis 19, Lord him is by himself in the house and smote them with blindness. Elisha, blindness. So why is it that it involved his son, Jesus. And there was a, there's a pregnant woman. Why can't we use the same formula of blinding the people that were trying to attack him? You know what? He is God. There are certain things that we, don't, we cannot really understand. But to put God in a box and to think this is how it works. One part he blinds them, the other part he caused them to flee. Okay. Humanly thinking, if I was God, of which you're all glad I'm not. Yeah, everybody should be glad I'm not, because too many people wouldn't be alive. Okay, the easiest thing, God, is for the pregnant woman, anyone that comes around them, smite them with blindness. Let the pregnant woman stay there. The knowledge of the kingdom, the mysteries, understanding the mystery of the kingdom when it comes to partnering with God is very important. <coughs> How he works. How he functions. And to understand that God is not placed in a box. Because one time we blinded them, it doesn't mean next time we blind them. And it's not really unfair for Joseph to be taught to flee. Everything God does, he does it for a reason. He, and then, where did he flee to? Egypt. Why? Why should the Son of God be taken to the worldly people? Scriptures. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, understanding the mysteries. We've done the uh, intimacy. This morning I was, Bill, I don't know if you know this song, I was singing, and I googled it, I was playing it. You know, falling in love with you over and over, over and over again. Oh, I keep falling in love with you. The knowledge of God. Why we need it. Second Chronicles chapter 15. So my first point is, please don't box God up. Oh, this is the way it's supposed to be. Oh, because, you know. And sometimes people talk from, I can't stand people that say stuff like this. I feel. Come on. I feel. What does it matter how you feel? The thing is, what is God saying? I feel it's supposed to be this. I feel. No. 
it is the word of God. Second Chronicles 15. Now, for a long season, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, sorry, I don't know whatever I say, Second Chronicles 15, verse 3. Now, for a long season, Israel has been without the true God. Number one, I want you to mark that. It doesn't say they did not have a God. They did not have a true God. They had many gods. They had God of self. The number one person on the throne is God called me. The God of me. The God of me is more powerful than the devil. Because the God of me rules. They had no, they are without a true God. Number two, without a teaching priest. A teaching priest. We are in a dispensation of who, the people who come in, they worship, singing. They will, they will dance to the songs. They will lift up their, their name to the songs. And there's no word. There's no teaching. They did not have a teaching priest. It doesn't say they did not have a priest. They did not have a teaching priest. They had priests. But not, the priests they had were not teachers. Teaching priests. And then it says they were without the law. Three things missing. A true God, a teaching priest, and the law to guide people. When a city is lacking these three things, when a family is lacking these three things, when a marriage is lacking these, these three things, when a church is lacking these three things, the, the, the result is the next verse, verse 4. But when they in their troubles did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he found he, he was, was found, found of, them. of them. That is the response. If you if you believe in your heart that these things are missing. Let's go to verse five. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, mm -hmm. nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. Why? Because, let's go to verse 3. Because these three things were missing. These three things were missing. And it's not just whooping and dancing. It's teaching. It's teaching people about the true God. The true God must be present. And this true God must be taught. Then the law has to be obeyed. So when the three things are missing, the true God, teaching priests, without the law. I was invited years ago, I was invited at... Um, some church, a church, it's the seven last words of Jesus. Seven last words of Jesus, I think, but that's, that's what it was. Um, I think it was seven minutes, they preached. So seven of us, seven minutes they preached. I think so, if I, if I remember well. This guy got up, and he hooped, and, uh, 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 and people stood and Jonathan he would say ah, ah, ha. Ah, ha, ha. and people amen wait a minute amen look if you've been in churches like that you know what I'm talking about my brother knows he understands there's nothing that was said ah, and, oh, ha. yeah and, oh, ha. yeah So, and then people got up. And my wife was watching me to see if I would get up. 
Now, I got up because I was taught. In fact, Pastor Kevin McKnight taught this. He said, look, if you're in a church, if the pastor of the church stands, you stand in honor of him. And I got up. I never clapped. Because the guy is going on, oh, ah, and I remember my mama. And, ah. Oh, yeah. I'm saying, oh, yeah, yeah, look, they'll, they'll, they'll do this action. Huh? Huh? Then I'm thinking, is this what people receive Sundays? And then, and then people are going, oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. I'm not making fun of God or making fun of these people. A word of God has to be taught. A true God has to be taught. Study the scriptures and share the scriptures. You can't just get up and do your hoops and dance and jump and... What have you communicated? Yeah. And the demon manifests in there and then people goes and fan it. Fan a demon. And I'm thinking, yeah. Who? A teaching priest. A teaching priest. Someone that will teach the word. Not opinions. Not someone that they Google. Yeah, you can Google sermons today. And teach it. Here's what we began with. We began with this verse. When we began this topic. First Timothy 2. First Timothy chapter 2. Verse 3. This for this is good and acceptable. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. What is good? Verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? How am I going to come to the knowledge of the truth through hoping? If I'm not saying anything. Look, the days are tough enough. The world is tough enough. You come to church to be equipped, to learn, to go, to be briefed and to be equipped with the word of God. Who have all men to be saved first and to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? Verse 5. For there is one God. We are told a true God must be present. This true God is one. There is one God. One mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. This has to be taught. The man, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You can't just teach stuff. It has to be the word. You know, let me, let me, let me find something that... Um, When I was writing notes, the kingdom of God is governed by his word. Period. Nothing to it. The word of God cannot be improved upon by man. 
I don't care how educated you become. I don't care how sophisticated the world become. The word of God cannot be improved upon. You cannot do a do-over or home improvement on the word of God. You cannot add or remove to the word of God. It remains the same. It will never change. So this idea of trying to change it, trying to add on it. No. Hallelujah. So the knowledge of him, the knowledge of God. In Luke chapter 24, I believe verse 31, I have to go to it, that is not in my notes, Luke chapter 24, it says they, you know, he opened their, he broke the bread and they knew him. They knew him. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 30, 24, 30, Luke chapter 24, verse 30. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and brought, brought it and gave to them. Verse 31, verse 31, their eyes were opened and they knew him. Well, what happened before? They did not know him. These are people that walked with him for three years. How is it that they did not know him? But after the communion, after intimacy, they finally knew him. They knew him and he vanished out of their sight. It is important to decide that I am going to know him. You know, I was, um, my nephew came, you know, he's, he's not small anymore, he's 20 something now, but when he was like 15, 16, I bought him this toy that had to put together the, the streets and the, the, the roads have to connect them. Now, I think I'm a smart guy, so I did, you know, the, the manuals over there, I said, I don't know, man. That's, yeah. I don't like reading manuals anyway, so I put it together. So after you put it together, then you have like four pieces that is left. Then we're thinking, where do these go? then you have to break it down to put those five pieces because the whole thing is crooked. Well, why didn't you read the manual the first time? This word of God is a manual for your life. The manual for everyday life. It will protect you. It will save you. It will guide you. Just reading it every day. Partnering with God. Isaiah 61. 3 to 4. Talk, let's just do three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for, joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I want you to pay attention to the last one. Read that. Go back to that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, okay? Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, 
that the planting of the Lord, go ahead, finish off the verse, that they might be glorified. Trees of righteousness. Trees of righteousness. Making yourself as a tree of righteousness. A tree produces fruits. A tree of righteousness is a tree that to have a fruit for someone that was promoted and another one that was fired. You are a tree of righteousness. You have to know how to manage people. Somebody was fired and they call you. Pastor Susie, I just lost a job. Does she have a fruit for that girl, for that man? After that, oh, Pastor Susie, I just got promoted. The same tree. Partnering with God. Someone who just had a baby. And someone that lost the baby. How does this tree produce a fruit? Partnering with God in such a manner that you comfort those that are mourning. A tree. And it says the planting of the Lord. Acknowledging that I am a tree of righteousness. I will not eat anything that will defile me. I will not eat it with my eyes. I will not eat it with my mouth. I will not eat it with my body. I keep myself pure. I am a tree of righteousness. Because you never know when somebody will call you and <coughs> and they need a fruit. What do I do? Oh, 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 I can't pray for you. First let me go and repent. A tree of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. I am not my own planting. You are not your own planting planting, acknowledging that that you are, the, you are a tree of righteousness. And it says trees of righteousness. MJ, come. It says trees, prologue, trees of righteousness. Trees. Two trees. So, how I live my life affect this tree. I should be considerate of this tree. When I think about looking at the internet and looking at some naked pictures, I should remember that there is another tree that will draw strength from me. There's another tree that because of the wind, I'll have to rub it. Trees of righteousness. It's not just me. I said this a few weeks ago. This life we live of not caring about how other things survive. You know, we don't even care about it. Oh, how are the lights? How would they pay for this? Oh, who cleans the church? Oh, what about people? Who is born again? Who's dying? This life where you don't care about the kingdom. You live your life in such a way that I don't care about MJ. MJ depends on me. I depend on him. We are called trees of righteousness. And then we are the planting of the Lord. The planting of the Lord. Finish it off. The planting of the Lord. Why are we called the planting of the Lord? That he may be glorified. Finish off the verse. 
that he might be glorified. What glorifies Jesus? So, people of God, Here's the last verse. Acts 8, verse 6. Acts 8, verse 6. And great cra- oh. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those which were those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Yes, the people gave him. Philip gave himself to be used. Next verse, verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. Look at the result of this in verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. Do you think about that? There was great joy in that city. There was great joy in that city city. What is my responsibility for it to have, for my city to be joyful? For, you know, for there to be peace or great joy? What do I do? What is my responsibility? In my house by myself, what do I do? Because I want great joy in the city. Daniel, what did he do? He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Purpose in your heart. Not as an instruction from somebody else. Well, Jonathan, I just decide that you know what? From now on, I'm going to change what I look at. I'm not going to watch any of these crazy movies. I'm not going to listen to stuff that is not bringing God glory. I will purpose in my heart that I will not defile myself. Why? Because I want great joy to be in my city. I'll do my part. That's all. We did a demonstration last time of carrying a chair, carrying somebody on a chair. I'm only responsible to carry one end of it. That's it. That's all. So again, You can't just be concerned about you. Because you are born again, you are on your way to heaven, and that's it. No. There are others. Common scripture. Second Chronicles Second Chronicle 7, verse 14. If my people are called by my name, my people shall humble themselves and pray. Pray for what? For others. And what is the result? Put it it up there. What is the result? The end of it says, I'll heal the land. Not just one person. It's not enough just for you and your family to be born again. It's not enough just for you and your family to eat. It's not enough. You as a child of God, you have to be concerned about other things. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now there's one scripture in my, in my spirit that I cannot bring out. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Father. Partnering with God. Our foundation scripture for partnering with God is Psalm 115, verse 16. The heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth, he has given it to men. Men. He has given it to you. I'll close with this. And I promise I'm closing my laptop. Jeremiah 29, verse 7. Jeremiah 29, verse 7. And seek the peace of the city. Whether seek what? Of? Which means it's not just you. It's others too. If, you, if we really cared about others, we'll be out there telling people about Jesus. The reason why we don't tell people about Jesus is because we are comfortable of who we are, of what we have. Come on. Okay, look, seek the peace of the city, mm -hmm. whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, mm -hmm. and pray unto the Lord for it. Mm -hmm. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. There you go. Pray. For your neighborhood. Pray. For your street. Pray. I used to drive on 7th Street and I'll curse all those strip clubs. Name of Jesus, may you lose business. Now there's a restaurant that has opened around there that, you know, uh, Clement's parents are running. So now we have a... Uh, we have, uh, we have a place to meet. Because sometimes you need a place to meet in that area. So we use that now as our arsenal to bombard and cause those street clubs to close. For in the peace thereof you shall have peace. You shall have peace. Stand to your feet. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He purposed in his heart. And he decided that I'm not going to eat Anything that will defile me. I'm not going to look at anything that will defile me. I'm not going to listen to anything that will defile me. Including music. Movies. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say things with my mouth that will defile me. I'm not. He purposed in his heart. Hallelujah. So this, what, this is a commitment I want us to make this, this afternoon. Purpose in your heart. Purpose in your heart. Look, you know, Pastor Bill, Jesus said these words, and I started thinking. He said, for their sake, I sanctify myself. Not for his sake. It says, for their sake. So sometimes it's not really you, but you say, you know what? For the sake of Jonathan, I sanctify myself. For the sake of Bill, I sanctify myself. I'm no 